It's 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning. The search is over for a Lexington native and her husband in Brussels. The family says it is now time for the healing to start. We've learned the name of the alleged business a former Kentucky Deputy Attorney General used in a bribery scheme. And fires may have damaged a couple of churches in Garrett and Pike counties, but that did not stop the members of those congregations from celebrating Easter Sunday. That and more ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Hello there, good morning, and welcome in on this Monday. We're glad you're on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain, and what a beautiful weekend we had, it right? It really was. Wonderful uh, Easter events uh, throughout the area, and uh, great weather for people to enjoy. Some people probably got some projects underway. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if they can complete those as the week goes along. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, most of us missed out on that rain there on Sunday, or yesterday, before the sun set. Some of us in the West still pick up on some showers before that sun set, but all in all, it was a really nice weekend. Now the rain is moving on out. The storms came yesterday evening and off into the night, and uh, those have pushed on out. And once that pushes on out fully, we'll really feel that cooler air slide back in here. We're in the 40s and 50s this morning. It's dropping as we go. And temperatures by the afternoon right around 50 degrees. Much cooler conditions in store today. But we're in spring, so what do you expect? An up and down forecast, and it continues all the way through your work week. I'm going to show you really high temperatures and maybe even some frost in your forecast coming up. All right, Micah, thank you very much. It's the news a Kentucky family was hoping they would not hear. A Lexington native and her husband now confirmed dead in a terrorist attack at the Belgium airport. Relatives of Stephanie and Justin Schultz tell WKYT that instead of focusing on how they died, they're choosing to remember how the couple lived. WKYT's Mark Barber is joining us live now with reaction from the family. Good morning, Bill. While their families miss the couple terribly, they're reliving their memories by focusing on what Justin and Stephanie loved, adventure, travel, and each other. The couple was last seen at Brussels Airport Tuesday, saying goodbye to Stephanie's mother in the departure gate. The days after the terror attacks for the family were filled with uncertainty as their friends and family members searched hospitals for the missing couple. Then over the weekend, the desperate search for answers ended when their families were told that the couple died in the explosions. Stephanie was from Lexington and she met her husband Justin in Nashville. They moved to Belgium a year and a half ago for a three-year work program. They spent just about every weekend traveling through Europe. They had stayed in an ice hotel. They ran with the bulls, and they had plans this past weekend to explore Finland. Stephanie's aunt says she misses their adventurous spirits and the love they had for their families. She was a peacemaker. If, if family or friends were upset with each other, she was the one trying to make peace. And so she's the kind of person that you wish everyone was, um, just like that. And Justin was so protective of her. It could be some time before their bodies are returned to their families, so their funeral services have not been planned yet. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you so much. More than 300 protesters clashed with riot police in central Brussels. The gathering started yesterday with mourners laying flowers at a temporary shrine made to honor the victims of Tuesday's attacks. Police say a group of men showed up with a banner denouncing ISIS, who is claiming responsibility for the attacks. Some of the protesters lit firecrackers. Riot police pushed the group away from the memorial with a water cannon. They arrested about 10 people, and two police officers were injured in all of that. Police in Belgium are continuing to carry out raids on suspected extremist nests. There were 13 raids Sunday morning in the capital and in two northern cities. Police say four people were arrested, but they aren't saying whether the raids were linked to the investigation into the deadly attacks at the airport and subway station. In other news this morning, we have learned the name of the business that a former Kentucky personnel secretary allegedly used in a bribery scheme. The Courier Journal reports Timothy Longmire used a Lexington consulting firm named MC Squared Consulting to obtain kickbacks and political contributions. Longmire faces a charge of bribery. In a complaint filed in U.S. District Court, Longmire is accused of using his authority to steer contracts to a business in exchange for kickbacks. 
Longmire most recently served as a deputy attorney general. He resigned last week. In Louisville, police are investigating a deadly shooting. They say someone shot a man on East Oak Street yesterday afternoon. That man died at a hospital. Police say people living near the scene heard several gunshots. Police also found a red Dodge Charger near the scene behind a convenience store. That vehicle had several bullet holes. Uh, no suspects have been named at this point. And St. Matthews police are investigating a deadly train wreck. Officers say the man was sitting on the railroad tracks in St. Matthews when a train hit him. The train's engineer was not able to stop in time. Police believe alcohol may have been a factor, and they are calling it a death investigation. Police in North Dakota have arrested a Kentucky woman who's been on the run for two years. A tip led Williston police to 30 year old Yarlis Rios. Rios is wanted in Fayette County on charges of forgery and obtaining a real estate loan through deception. Police in Lexington say Rios embezzled thousands of dollars from the apartment complex where she worked and filed false tax returns. They transported her back to Kentucky and she is currently. In the Fayette County Detention Center. A Laurel County constable charged for second degree manslaughter is to be in court this morning for a pretrial conference. Investigators say Constable Bobby Smith shot and killed Brandon Stanley at a store earlier this month. They say Smith was trying to serve an arrest warrant on Stanley at the time. Investigators say Stanley was shot twice. His fiancee says the shooting happened the night before the couple was supposed to get married. Smith posted a $50,000 bond and was never taken to jail. Months after a fire damaged part of their church, a Garrett County congregation is back at home. The Lancaster First Assembly of God has been holding services in a makeshift worship center since October. On Easter morning, senior pastor Wendell Johnson welcomed his congregation back to their old building. It's an exciting day. It's an exciting day. This week, uh, just alone, uh, I have a crew here, volunteer crew, and we've put in uh, 70, 75 hours trying to get everything ready. The church added several new features to their facility. They even knocked out a wall to create more room. They are building a 13,000 square foot family life center that should open this fall. And police in eastern Kentucky are still looking for the person responsible for setting a church on fire there last summer. The Peso Free Will Baptist Church in Pike County is needing some major repairs. Church members spent their Easter morning in a small shelter on the church's property. They say the fire has really only brought them closer. Usually when something like this happens, a lot of time people begin, tends to fall apart. But here seems like the people's been more mature. They've, they've come together, pulled together, and uh, everyone gets along just wonderful. The church's pastor says they are waiting for a permit to finish the construction. They're hoping that they can move back into that building in about two to three months. Well, we have a traffic alert for you this morning if you're traveling on Lexington's west side. <laughs> That's right. One lane has Versailles Road. Well, one lane of Versailles Road, rather, she'll be shut down in both directions at New Circle Road beginning this morning. WKYT's Mike Byer joins us now with more on how long the closures will last. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Michelle. The ongoing widening and reconstruction here at the Versailles Road and New Circle Road interchange will result in some lane closures this morning. Beginning at 7 a.m., the inbound and outbound left lanes of Versailles Road will be closed. This is due to construction of the flyover ramp. Now, these lanes will reopen tomorrow at 6 p.m. During this time frame, a reduced speed limit of 45 miles per hour will be in effect. Officials are encouraging motorists to use a different route. However, they say if you must travel through this area, to use extreme caution. Now, this road closure comes at a good time with Fayette County Schools being on spring break, meaning there will be less traffic in this area than on a normal Monday morning. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. You just said it seems like they're always working on that area. They really are. A lot of construction has gone on on the, that side of town in recent years. But a lot of uh, important uh, things out that way. Keen in the to airport. Close because yeah. of spring break, I guess. I guess that was pretty good planning. Uh, 509 on WKYT this morning. We're just getting started on your Monday, and we're glad you're up and at it with us early today. Look out, Netflix. You've got competition. Apple's set to release its own original television programming. The details still ahead on WKYT this morning. And also ahead, many around the world celebrated Easter yesterday and plenty celebrated the holiday in New York City. Some in quiet ways and others with a parade. That's coming up after Micah's forecast. Yeah, the clouds are overhead for today. And what that means? Well, that means some much cooler air. That's what we're getting focusing in on. I'll show you that in your forecast coming up. 
Now, your Zone by Zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. That rain has moved on now. Now it's long gone. Now we focus our attention on the colder air that's filtering on in. Not just that, but look at the gray that you see there on the screen. What we're doing, we threw satellite on top of the radar, and the gray is just the cloud deck. And that cloud deck plays a big role in our forecast. You can see the clear skies back toward western portions of Illinois and over toward Mizzou. But for us, for us, it's going to be a pretty ugly day. Until we hit later on in the day, I think that's when we start to see at least some sunshine. We'll just see how far this cloud deck it actually makes its way eastbound. But the rain's long gone. With those clouds, you could get some drizzle. If you remember last week, we did the same exact thing where you have the low clouds overhead, the cooler air filtering on in, and some drizzle out and about. It's patchy drizzle, and that's the way it's going to be for today. Temperatures are in the 40s now, 50s back toward the east and southeast, but you guys will drop as that cooler air kind of punches into eastern Kentucky. But it's not going to drop that much. Once we hit the afternoon, upper 40s, lower 50s, it's a pretty chilly day, especially if you have the clouds overhead and those breezy conditions right around 10 to 15 miles per hour. We go off into the evening and night, no problems whatsoever. Here's what's going to happen during the evening and night. You'll start to see those uh, temperatures start to take a dive, especially right there around midnight into 8 a.m. when you start to see those clouds disappear. And once the clouds disappear and with the light winds, you can expect those temperatures to get close to that frost line. At frost point, typically we look at 36 degrees. Reason being is those thermometers are about six to seven feet off the ground for the most part. And the ground temperatures, the actual surface that you're standing on, could be right there around that 32 degree reading. So it's getting close. Remember, don't plant anything until uh, we get after Keeneland, okay? So the spring meet afterwards, because here's what we're going to do. We're going to see those temperatures go up and down, up and down, all the way through the work week this week. And I don't see that changing for next week either. That is your spring setup the next few weeks. And 70s are back in the forecast after those cool temperatures today. Now, check this out. Did you know this? Okay, so we travel throughout the next few days. And uh, yeah, we were looking at least some chances, not widespread. I don't see any widespread frost, but at least some chances of isolated spots here and there. On average, our last spring frost typically occurs on April 25th. We have about a month before, yeah, we, we actually get out of That's normally. That's not the latest. The latest has actually been in May. But normally, it's late April that we actually get rid of that frost talk. So just keep in mind trying to plant those seeds and all those plants, what whatnot. Yeah, it's going to be a, a tough go at it the next couple of weeks. Here's your seven-day forecast. 50 today, still in the 50s for tomorrow. At least we stay dry. Wednesday will be your best day in the forecast at Roughly 70 degrees. We'll start to bring in some rain later on that evening and off into the night. It's pretty widespread there on Thursday. Thursday's kind of an ugly day, but at least it's on a Thursday and not a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. That's when some cooler air filters back in, but at least we stay dry then. So, really, to sum it up for you, I mean, these temperatures are at or below average for most of the part of the seven day forecast. But we only have one day, really, with a chance mm -hmm. of rain. It's on Thursday. Yeah. Looks like a great so week. Yeah, yeah, it's not all that bad. It's good. You know, we'll spring, spring break uh, week for a lot of uh, true. kids around the area. 5.15 is the time this morning. In New York City, St. Patrick's Cathedral was filled with people and celebration all for Easter Sunday. Many also took time to pray for the victims of the Brussels attacks. And Sunday Mass helped bring a sense of unity to the hundreds who were in the pews. Now, when the service was over on Fifth Avenue, another kind of celebration began. In the annual bonnet parade, people put on their best Easter costumes, including some pretty big hats. And, of course, they saw lots and lots of candy. <laughs> I'm sure All everyone right. did yeah, this past lots Easter, of right? Uh, fancy hats and uh, celebrations, bright colors. Springtime in America. It's a good, good time of the year, you know? Reminds All me right. Of a little thing I call Derby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right I was, corner, I was right? thinking of giving uh, the Derby a run for its money, but. Uh, <laughs> No comparing to those hats, I guess. <laughs> we'll see those here in a few weeks. Good to have you along on WKYT this morning. A lot more news coming right up. Yeah, when we return, we'll have a look at your money. The surprising reason you'll need to get to the airport extra early if you're flying this summer and how Apple is taking on Netflix with new original TV shows. I'm Jill Wagner in New York. Love those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Hey, welcome back in. Good morning to you. Our time is 520 on WKYT and prepare for longer lines at the airport this summer. That's the word. And Apple is taking on Netflix when it comes to original programming. Joe Wagner has the latest on your money. 
U.S. markets will be open after the long holiday weekend. Investors will be watching for the important March jobs report. Last week, the markets held steady despite the terror attacks in Brussels. The Dow finished 13 points higher on Thursday. The Nasdaq gained four points. Investors are also digesting some new numbers about the U.S. economy. The Commerce Department revised the GDP from a 1% growth rate to a 1.4% in the last quarter. Now, that's better than previously estimated, but still relatively weak. Get ready for extra long security lines at the airport this summer. Airlines are already warning travelers to arrive at least two hours early or risk missing their flight. Part of the problem, fewer than expected people signed up for the TSA pre-check program, which is a faster screening process. That means the TSA doesn't have enough screeners to handle a growing number of flyers. And Apple is taking on Netflix with its own original television programming. The New York Times reports Apple is working with Will I Am and two TV execs on a non-scripted series about apps. No word on when it will be released and how people will watch the show. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, follow me on Twitter at Jill Wagner, CBS. In New York, I'm Jill Wagner. And it's 521 on WKYT this morning. Still a lot more news coming up for you on your Monday morning. Sports is next. Kentucky football picks up a big commit. The Bad Cats tame the Gators in a weekend series and Moorhead State is still playing basketball. That's next in sports. The rain is long gone. Now we're looking at those lower clouds with a little patchy drizzle here and there. Temperatures are in the 40s and also some 50s as we look toward eastern and southeastern Kentucky. So as you're walking out the door, it is a bit cool, especially with those winds gusty as that front is pushing on through. Let me take you through your day, how to plan out your day. Well, it's just going to be cloudy skies. Like I said, maybe some drizzle, some patchy drizzle during the morning hours. But by the afternoon, we're right around 50 degrees. Also with those breezy conditions. So it, it will be on the cool side of things as we approach the afternoon. But once we hit the next few days, we'll see those temperatures skyrocket. And then after that, they drop right back down. It just never stops with this roller coaster ride. We're going to talk about that in your full forecast. First, let's check out sports, see what's going on. Kentucky football's 2017 recruiting class got a huge boost this weekend with a commitment of four-star wide receiver Javante Richardson. The Maple Heights, Ohio native is the number 84 overall prospect in the 2017 class and the number two player in the Buckeye State. In the 24-7 rankings, Kentucky moves up to ninth nationally and second in the SEC behind some school named Alabama. Kentucky baseball evened up a series with top-ranked Florida on Saturday, snapping the Gators' 17-game win streak. Could the Wildcats hand Florida its first series loss of the season on Sunday? Florida would jump out to the early 3 to nothing lead. Now 3-2 in the seventh, and a wild pitch scores Evan White from third. That evens up the game at three apiece. This one would go to extras. Now 4-3 to three Florida in the tenth. Riley Mahan picks a good time for his third home run of the season over the right field wall, and it's tied at 4-4. Four to four. Wildcats would load the bases with one out on an 0-2 pitch. That one goes into the dirt. Tyler Marshall, come on down. He's headed for home. Head first slide will win it for the Wildcats, and the cliff is rocking on Easter Sunday. Kentucky wins 5-4 in 10 innings for a fourth straight series win over Florida. Well, not many would have guessed before the season that Moorhead State would be the last team from Kentucky still playing basketball in the final week of March. But that is the case. After falling short of the NCAA tournament, the Eagles accepted an invitation to the CBI tournament, and they've been playing their best basketball of the season. Well, this week they will take on Nevada in a three-game series for the tournament championship. Says that we've accomplished a lot. You know, it's been some great teams that have come around, come through Moorhead, and for us to be at the pinnacle of, and this team to be at the pinnacle of the success that Moorhead has, ha has had says a lot about these kids. And everybody's just a team, and we just don't want to lose. So that's the thing: is one game will go home. So nobody wants to go home. We just want to keep playing. We are the last team playing in Kentucky. That's a plus, and we wanted just to add on to that. The CBI Finals will consist of a best of three series will air live on ESPN beginning with game one tonight in Moorhead. Games two and three will take place in Reno, Nevada on Wednesday and Friday if necessary. And the final four of the NCAA tournament is now set as North Carolina and Syracuse both pick up wins on Sunday. They will join Villanova and Oklahoma. That'll do it for your morning sports. Have a great day.